Welcome back everybody and now it's my pleasure to introduce our second speaker Jetro de Chateau who is a very experienced uh, teacher, teacher trainer, well-known storyteller who lives in the north in, in Cantabria, Cantabria and who today would like to talk to us about gamification and game-based learning in the primary classroom. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. <laughs> okay. So title of my session is Gamification or Game-Based Learning, but uh, although Louise has already mentioned a few things, I'd just like to highlight that in addition to teaching language and uh, doing a lot of storytelling, I trained as a musician, so I have some interest there, but I also teach robotics to primary school uh, children in English, and I'm always very interested in using technology as a teaching tool, and that is where this session starts, as, starts off. Um, why use games is an obvious question, but I thought it was interesting to show uh, two comments by uh, video game designers about the importance of games. The first one is by Rafe Kosher, who basically says that games are teachers, that the fun is just another word for learning, for finding things out. And Chris Crawford, another game designer, seconds that, saying that fun is an emotional response to learning. And of course, when our pupils are emotionally involved in what they're doing, they're going to retain much more of what they're doing and they're going to be much more interested in learning the things that we put before them. So let's get right to it. What is gamification? Now definitions vary, but uh, to make it very strict uh, definition, uh, gamification is application of game style elements and mechanics such as points, levels, challenges to a non-gaming context. So gamification is not playing games, it is using ideas from video games and applying them to the classroom to make your classes more interesting. So let's focus on that for now. Okay? Uh, before we start, I'd like to ask you a question though. Um, yes, we've got to have your say. <laughs> okay. You'll all know what that is. It's going to appear, the question on your screen now. And the question is, well there are two questions for you to answer. You just need to write in a short answer. How many of you play video games? So just write in, yes. How many of you have pupils who are avid games, gamers, sorry? Again, yes. And let's see. Now I personally, well actually I think I've played video games, should I admit this, <laughs> about twice. I think in okay. my life with my nieces and nephews. That's the thing, yeah. I started yeah. playing video games with my kids. Yeah. Before that, I didn't have much interest. No. No. And then you really became... Uh, now interested. they make me play it, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a willing subject, though. <laughs> right, we're getting answers, and people are saying, right, I'm just going to read it. Yes, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. No, yes. Um, okay, let, let me go down. I don't play video games, Carmen says. I'm in the same boat, Carmen, but most of my students are avid gamers, mostly boys, she says. Okay. Mm, let's see, um, Nuria, um, no to whether she plays, but her pupils, yes. Um, others are saying, for example, Virginia, thank you, sometimes she plays, but not very often, but obviously, absolutely yes for her yeah. students, mm -hmm. for her pupils. So yeah, it seems like the adults are not playing them or very occasionally, and the children, the pupils, are. Okay. In fact, in many cases, all of them, as um, uh, Anna Garcia is saying here, Aroa, yes, well, yes to herself and yes to the pupils, so, um, but you seem to be in a minority, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the important yes. thing here is that uh, even if you don't know much about video games, your students do, and they will recognize these things, or at least they will respond to those stimuli whether they play or not. Right? So um, let's identify what those game elements are then that you can imp uh, implement in your classroom. First up, XP. Now, you may not know, but any gamer knows that XP are experience points, the points that you score during the game. And of course, those points, uh, in a sense, correlate to the points that students score for exercises they do, maybe even for a grade that they obtain at the end of a, of a semester. Uh, and points also lead to badges, which uh, we will see in a moment. 
Uh, games always have a leaderboard, a scoreboard where you can see how you are doing and often also how you're doing compared to other gamers in your same game. Badges are trophies that students, sorry, that gamers can win, can earn uh, by doing certain actions or sometimes just by stumbling upon a solution to something. Uh, levels are something that drive gamers on to improve their score and uh, open up new opportunities. And finally, uh, a lot of games include teamwork versus individual work. So they're not just playing by themselves, but working together as a team in order to uh, achieve a certain challenge. Now, um, I would like to very quickly show you something on Khan Academy. Now, if you don't already know this, uh, it's a, a website that was set up mostly to teach uh, sciences, mathematics, uh, uh, but to uh, students of all ages beginning in pre-primary and primary. Uh, as you can see, this is my profile on uh, Khan Academy. You can see I have a, a badge here, sorry, a, a, an avatar representing me. Now this avatar has grown over time as I have acquired skills. Um, and on my profile page, you can see the badges that I've earned through my activities, some of the projects that I've done, um, you can also see how far I've progressed in my uh, different activities here, how much I have done and how much I still have left to do. Now, applying this to a classroom, to an English classroom context, uh, we've already talked about um, a leaderboard. Now, a leaderboard is something you've probably already used in your classroom to exemplify good behavior, for example. Um, this is one way of using gaming techniques in your classroom, stimulating kids to earn points uh, by using their names, maybe even including avatars that they can design themselves, uh, by making them earn badges because of good behavior, because of the work that they've turned in, because of additional work that they've done on your prompts. Um, and we have many tools at our disposal to do these things. Uh, a nice one here is Make Badges. Uh, now, don't worry too much about the links that you see right now. There is a handout that you can download at the end of the session. And in that handout, you'll be able to find all the links and easily follow them and download or access any activities that I show you here. So Make Badge allows you to, well, basically do what it says. Uh, configure a badge depending on a script that you want to put. Uh, make it a back, give it a background, and even create some avatars so your students are not just names, but actual people. Uh, some more platforms that you can use for this are Icon Archive, The Noun Project, Devi DeviantArt. Uh, but as soon as you look for um, icons um, on the internet, you will find many options that you can print and cut out and you use in your classroom. Or you can use a specific solution like Edmodo, for example. Now, Edmodo is something that is uh, maybe a little bit more for the older students. It's kind of the Facebook for educational interaction. But as you can see in the slide here, um, there are different activities that students uh, can enter into, different levels that they can choose. There is a leaderboard indicating who has earned which badges. Uh, and there is also interaction with the teacher and possibly even the parents in order to show the progress that they have made in the classroom. One that I would like to show you is Class Dojo, uh, which is uh, possibly better oriented to, to the uh, students that you might have. I have a, a demo class here. And in my demo class, I have five students, Beyonce, Denzel, Jennifer, Justin, and Leonardo. Justin again. Yes, Justin <laughs> again, exactly. Um, and uh, basically, what this allows me to do is to create a leaderboard here. You can see the, the students already have earned points, but I could give them more points. As a whole class, they have worked very hard, and they have helped each other. So I'm going to give them a point there, right? Five students. Um, now, Jennifer this week has been having trouble arriving on time. So I'm going to give her a negative point here for arriving on time. And um, then there is a group on table two that has uh, merited an award here for participating in a project. So I'm going to give them that award. And so in this way, I, I'm using gaming techniques, gaming ideas in order to reward my students and they can see where they are at. You can either show them on your whiteboard or you could even uh, allow their parents or the student access to all the information in the class, send out the homework through this app as a kind of blog where they can see what they have done. Um, you can see reports 
about how well your students have done and areas that they may need to work on individually or as a group and you can send out messages so this is a, a complete platform that allows you to bring a kind of gaming environment to your classroom now there's another platform that I can show you it's called Navio and it is uh, an online learning platform by Macmillan as you can see again I have here a, a board where I can award points to teams to individual players uh, where players can also uh, enter into a world where they learn things and uh, create their own avatars uh, configure it according to their likes to better match their personality or the way they they feel they look uh, adjusting different parameters or even buying uh, accessories based on the points they have scored by doing activities on the platform so um, students enter into a unit they can walk around and when they find a challenge take the challenge earn the points and in this way participate in a gaming environment while learning English so we've looked at these game elements we've also seen a little bit about game mechanics already uh, game mechanics include quests a quest is when students go out to find something for example uh, find five objects in the classroom that are blue or find five words that begin with a B choices students have the choice to go one way or another this is very different from how we normally use a course book where one exercise comes after the other but in games normally you have the option to go one way or another and as you saw in the uh, Navio app that I just showed you students have the ability to walk around and choose what challenges they do or in what order they do the challenges in the end they'll end up doing most of them if not all of them but this element of choice is really attractive and makes them feel more involved in the decision-making process competitions of course where teams or individual players can score points and then there is something very interesting those are chances where sometimes you do something in a game and unwittingly unknowingly you score points for being the first to spell a ten letter word or something like that where uh, the student doesn't know in advance that he can score points but you can have little surprises ready for your students to be willing to find out what the options are within the game that you present in the class and finally there are challenges which are different from competitions in that uh, challenges give you the opportunity to allow students uh, to challenge another student in a certain area and in that way uh, have a one-on-one -on -one competition and earn points now we've seen what gamification is and how it is not playing games but using gaming techniques and mechanics uh, applied to teaching in the classroom but of course playing games is also an important part of how we teach in the classroom and game-based learning means that we use actual games in the learning process as a source of inspiration for our students and next up I want to show you a series of activities that can be used both in a digital environment and in an analog environment and sometimes in a combination of that depending on how you prefer to do it in your classroom students often uh, respond very well to the digital interface because they feel it is novel but it is not absolutely necessary to always use it to make it really attractive to them so let's have a look how would you gamify your writing now last year I did a Macmillan webinar on tell me a story and in that webinar I explained how you can use different techniques to get students to craft a story uh, to do something interactive uh, I've taken a few pictures here from that presentation the first is a, uh, a story flower mm. where each petal represents a basic question in the story like who what when where or why and by answering simple questions students build a story that they can then uh, flesh out create a story around or share with another mm -hmm. student in order to give them the opportunity to write a novel story around the concept that they had not in initially imagined the next one looks a bit odd but it is really the folding uh, lines for uh, a snapdragon um, they also allow your students a level of choice where you uh, write in different options right? uh, maybe different locations or different moods and by using a random number and with the help of mm -hmm. a fellow student you can select one of those moods or story elements in order to incorporate them and I remember as a kid in primary school doing that.
Yeah, for fun. I won't tell you how long ago, <laughs> but yes. Yeah. But uh -huh. it was also pedagogical. Yeah. And the, without the us knowing. Being physical. Yeah with those things yeah, yeah. Um, and then the final one in this case it's it's an expanding sentence but uh, in addition to expanding sentences you can use expanding stories writing uh, the first line of a story allowing the next student to see the previous line but not what comes before and in that way crafting a story among many students a way of gamifying writing another way uh, would be to use something that is called story cubes in the uh, official um, commercial version that's the dice that you see on the table here um, but you can of course also make your own story cubes and basically the idea is similar to the Snapdragon mm -hmm. where you uh, craft a dice with in this case characters or again moods, locations uh, or other elements of a story that students can roll in order to let the dice decide what their story is going to be like creating in that way a, a gaming or a, a game environment for an activity that they have to do anyway, but that now feels much more their own. Um, continuing with writing, we have speaking, which are often very, very clearly related. Um, these are two pictures of click and point games. They're very simple games where you have to click or point to a certain area of the game to solve uh, a riddle. If you look at the second picture, there's a little boy sitting on a, on a tree. Uh, on a fallen tree. His name is Droppy and he looks very sad. Now how do you solve that? Mm. Right? In this game what you do is you click on on the pieces of wood that you find to put them in the fireplace. Right? Then you click on his bag in order to get out the magnifying glass. Then you oh, click okay. on the cloud to move that and then the sun shines through the magnifying glass, starts the fire and now Droppy is happy because he can have a roasted marshmallow. Now how would you use that in the classroom? Uh, of course, you have the language that is related to uh, giving instructions, the imperative. You can use it to work on sequencing, first this, and then that, and after that this. You can use it for conditional tenses. If you gather the wood and you put it in the fireplace, you will or you can. Right? You can also use it to practice a past tense. We took the wood, we put it in the fireplace, and then so by using a simple short game that serves as the basis for an activity uh, students are going to feel much more involved in the story than if they simply see a picture in a course book and of course this could be done analogically as well with just pictures most definitely you no know, on on the board and in fact the children have to think don't they mm -hmm. it's not just the language it's also the process of thinking okay what's the situation we set up the situation and they have to think about what are the solutions mm. to make him... It's the problem-solving attitude. It's the problem-solving yeah. attitude, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Nice. And if you do that in front of a classroom or as a class, yeah. maybe on your whiteboard, you yes. can get students to give the teacher instructions. Yes. Do this, do that. Yes. Then report back, maybe in writing yes. or uh, verbally, about what has happened and what was the sequence and how they solved the problem. Exactly. Mm. Okay, next up, uh, we continue with speaking. Uh, now you probably remember this, uh, recognize this picture here. It's uh, it's an American game show which is called Jeopardy. Oh yeah. And Jeopardy consisted yeah. in um, actually you had to make you had to make questions. You had to make questions based. You were given an answer. That's no. It. So you were given an answer something like I don't know. Um, she was born in a, she was born in 1969. She's a famous actress, and you had to come up with a question. Who, Who was? was yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. So ah, we can yes. use this in the classroom in a slightly different way. And again, I'll show you a website that does this very nicely. Um, I've set up a quiz here with furniture. You see some pictures and solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the next tab, I have colors and again, some pictures and solutions. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the game here. And so now one of my students can come to the board yep. and uh, choose to do a 100 point question right on only furniture 100 only 100 to starters <laughs> good so what do you sit on a chair well let's see if that's right there you go it's a chair so you have earned 100 so can points I, now can i go up to the next level yes you can <laughs> there we go where does the teacher write what does the teacher write on 
Mm, a blackboard. Well, yes. in my day, a blackboard. Now it's a whiteboard. In this picture, <laughs> yes, certainly. Okay, so again, a blackboard, right? Let's let's try the other category just for the for the fun of it. We can, of course, immediately jump to 500. The, the ah, questions yes. would then no. be more complicated. No, yes, although in this exactly. case, I haven't really graded them. Right? And uh, what color are the chairs? That's easier than the first yeah, question. Yeah, it is. Okay, so it all Green. depends on how you want to, how <laughs> difficult you want to make this. Right? Now, if you don't want to use a digital solution, you can, of course, quite easily do this differently. If you just use your blackboard and some of blue tack or magnets, absolutely, right? And Which then I've students done. can actually physically collect their points, and at the end of the game, you can count how many points they've scored. Right? Okay, more speaking. Now, this is something that. Uh, my kids are crazy about it at the moment. There's this song, Cups, where they do a rhythm with a, with a plastic cup and, oh, and yeah. sing to it. And uh, there's a Spanish version, but of course they got really intrigued when they found out there was also an English version. Now, the language is slightly too difficult for them to really be able to sing the whole song. But the nice idea about karaoke is, um, well, I don't know about you, but when you sing in the car by yourself, right? <laughs> you probably only sing part of the song. You don't know all of the lyrics, maybe. But yeah. you're still happy to sing but along, you right? you then kind of imagine the others. Yes. Um, but the bit that you do know yes. sort of gets reinforced. It right? does, okay. absolutely. So the important thing here is not that your students are capable of singing the entire song. The important thing is that they're capable of singing the let it go, right? <laughs> and the stimulus of participating yes. in something like that yes. really motivates them. Yes. to see that English is not just a subject that needs to be studied and, and, and the exam passed, but something that they can use in a real-life environment. So karaoke is a great way, mm. a great tool to gamify your speaking in the classroom. And uh, they'll have no trouble doing their homework. <laughs> right. Gamify your reading. And again, this is a recommendation from one of my daughters. Okay. And she really likes the, um, this website because it has a, a number of stories uh, that are read out to the students. Um, you learn to read here, and let's just take the first one, Zach the Rat. Um, can you hear that? Yes? Okay. And so this is more than just reading, because there is a kind of game element involved. Uh, you can, of course, listen to the story, but every time there's a picture and you click on the picture, something, something happens, yeah, which animation. makes it that much more attractive. And when they listen to the story and then repeat the words, they're, of course, learning to read, learning to pronounce their English. Okay, let's move back. Time for assessment. Now, how do you do that in a gamified way? Now, the first solution that I'm offering you is one where you as a teacher are the one using technology, but your students are using analog mm -hmm. things, okay? Um, this is called clickers, and, and this is a clicker, okay? It's, uh, it, it looks a little bit like a QR code. It does, actually. Yes. And uh, the thing is, this thing has a, has a number, which means it's assigned to a student on your list. Uh, okay. You have a list of 25 students. Each student oh, okay. has a number anyway. That one to you, yeah, 25. Exactly. So you make sure that every time you, you work with this, student number one on the list gets clicker number one. And uh, it's a little too small to see right now, but right next to the picture here you see an A, a, a B, a C, and a D. So depending on how you orient this thing, you give a different answer okay. in the application that you use. Now, what I will do is I'll access the clicker's website. Okay and um, start the app on my phone. There's an app both for uh, iOS and for Android. And if I go to the application, here you can already see that I have some questions prepared with or without pictures, okay? Mm -hmm. What I'll do is I'll load two of them. I'll add this one to the queue of the demo class that I have set up. Um, and. I'll expand this and get that into the queue for the demo class as well. Right, and you're my demo class. Oh, okay. Right? okay. Okay, so, so I have a number. You're student is number one. Correct? Yes, you have a number. You're okay. number one. I'm right? number one. And what I've done is on the back of the clicker, I've written down the way it needs to be oriented to answer to a question in a certain way. Okay, so we have D, A, B, and so C. So we have options. So, so now you I have, have to options. choose one option. You have four options. You just hold it like this. Belly. Right? Okay. And uh, what I'll do is I'll 
I'll launch the, uh, the questions. There we are. But I can orientate it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now I'm not seeing my questions. Uh, there we are. And that's one. Okay. So you should see this now. What's my name? You still remember it? My name. <laughs> no, my name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is you, you select your answer. Okay. A is it Alex, B is it Louise, C is it Jethro, and 4 is it Carlos. Right. think it's... Okay. And what I'm going to do, this uses a kind of facial recognition app, and of course because of the lighting now, it will not work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, for some reason I'm not, I'm not getting a reading. We we'll try it again? Yeah. No, I'm having a lot of interference here. Okay. This is odd. Because we used it before. Yes, we well, that's a, fine. Try, try run. once more. I'll okay. just come back. Yeah. No, for some reason it's not seeing that's you. That's fine. No. Anyway, so the, the thing is, the thing is, you do not need to scan individual students. Mm -hmm. You get all your students one of these, and what the app does is it, it uses a kind of facial recognition technology, so it, it recognizes these flickers, it recognizes the orientation they have, and with a single picture, you get exactly. the answers of all your students at the same time. Ah, so and those are then appear. imported here into the, uh, to the list where I you know, yes. reveal my answer and see who has, who has answered correctly or incorrectly. Right. Okay. Um, so, my, yeah, so I had chosen, I'm number one, and I decided it, the, the answer was C, because I think your name yeah. is Jetro. Okay. And so I held it like this with the C up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then my answer appears on there exactly as well as the other 24 in the class yeah. okay and then later on you have access to the reports to see who answered what and yes. you have a, f a full excel sheet that you can download also to easily see who got what grades okay that's simple um, and then finally uh, this is the other way around this is where you need technology and so do your students they need to have access to either a smart device or a computer if you're in the computer lab uh, and this is called Kahoot, and you can actually participate in this one. So what I'm going to do is uh, access Kahoot. Um, so Kahoot, I think, is um, uh, my understanding is that it's good for quizzes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In you particular. can do multiple choice quizzes. You yeah. can do polls. You can do different yes. kinds of activities. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have a, um, a poll here related to the uh, gamification versus game-based learning. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the talk. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. So I have a question here. It's all ready. And uh, what we'll do is I'll, we'll play it. Okay. Now, this is how it works. You get out your phone or on your computer, you go, you open a new um, So that's what you a should new do tab the right viewer. now, right? And you go to kahoot.it. So it's K A H O O T dot I T, kahoot it. And lowercase. That's it. And once you do that, um, ready to join. Let's give it. Okay. Once you do that, you need to enter a code. Now, in the app, let me see if I can do that very quickly myself. In the app, you have to enter a gaming pin. And the gaming pin is on your screen now. After you enter the pin, you will be asked a username. You can give any name you like at this moment because we're not in the classroom. I don't need to know who gives what answer. And I see a few are already coming in. Okay. I'll give you a few more moments to get everything ready. I'll get there in there myself. Five, two, give nine. Give me a moment as well. Yeah. I want to do it. Five, two, nine, six, five, four, six. Enter. Okay. Give a name. I'll just give my name. Yeah. I'm in there now too. Good. And I'm I see there. you there. Good, <laughs> Louise. All I'm right. In. Eight players so far. Now be quick or we'll move on. <laughs> uh, that's working. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge. Yeah. Good. All right. In ten, I'll press start. Right? Okay. Ooh. There we go. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. So now, this is what happens. You ready? You should see the question. Which part of the talk was more practical for you? Right? 
And the possible answers are either the gamification part, which is the first part of the talk, or the game-based learning part of the talk. And depending on your answer, depending on your choice, you either click the red field with the triangle or the blue field with the diamond. Okay. So go ahead. And it's anonymous. It's anonymous, yes. Right. Okay. So here's the results. We've got eight people who prefer the game-based learning part and three people who prefer the gamification part. Okay. Okay. Right. But that's interesting that it's it's anonymous. It's so anonymous, no yes. People yes. are more likely... You, yeah. you can configure it in yeah. such a way that you can then uh, set up a, a, yes. a multiple choice. In a, in a poll in this case, yes. it's, it's anonymous. When you get a multiple choice, choice it would section, be. then you enter into your Kahoot uh, yes. uh, user. Yes. And you can again download the results so that you can see uh, the scores of your students in okay. your class. And the interesting thing here is that it doesn't only register the right answer. Yeah. It also registers the response time. So oh, the okay. faster you answer, the more points you score. Okay. And again, we're back to the yes, experience so points, points in the gamified classroom. Yes. Okay. Finally, a last quote, again from uh, a game designer, a video game designer, who says that it's invari uh, an invariable principle of all play, finite and infinite, that whoever plays must play freely. Whoever must play cannot play. The idea of play is that students feel that they're free to do something different, something innovative, mm. that they have the choice to go one way or another, that it is not an obligation to do this game, but that it's their choice and their privilege to participate in this game. Yes. And by doing that, they will feel motivated, they will feel included, and they will feel much more part of their own learning process. Okay, great. Food for thought, eh? Thank you. Shall we give people the opportunity to send in some questions or comments about the session? Certainly. I'm sure some people will have some questions to make. So now on your screen, we have the send in your question. Uh, we'll give you about 10, 15, 20 seconds, more or less, half a minute, to, to send in your questions or comments. Okay, I mean... For me personally, I, I think both sides really. I had to answer obviously mm. one answer: a gamification or game-based learning. But I think the two are are, yeah. are clearly they're very distinct. But in but a way, they, they, they often, often they often overlap. They do, don't because they? as we saw with Kahoot, for example, yes. it is it is a game. Yes. But then again, it also uses gaming strategies exactly. to do assessment. Exactly. So there is a bit of a mix of both. Exactly. Okay, Maria Garet Garcetti. Um, thank you, Maria is saying, I use clickers and children love it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we'll see if anybody else. A lot of resources. Thank you very much from Alicia. Thank, yeah. thank you, Alicia. Uh, remember, there's, this, um, uh, there's a handout yes. with all the links. Yes, uh, which yes. Which I'm yes. sure we will inform we, about yes, how they I can will, get And I said on. at the beginning that yeah. we send them to you as well as the certificate of attendance. Um, Noelia. Mm, says, how can, no, that's not Noelia, I'm, let me just see, I go down a little bit, not Noelia, it was Rosé, can we use gamification in a more cooperative way? Well, gamification is not necessarily uncooperative, yeah. uh, you, you've seen in some of the, um, some of the gamification platforms that uh, students are awarded points in groups, so depending on the group work they've done. Yes. Uh, we've seen challenges and, um, uh, and other types of, of uh, competitions mm -hmm. uh, when you don't necessarily have students competing individually against each other, but you can have them work together on an assignment Yes. where each one brings their own knowledge to the assignment Yes. and, and then evaluate them as a group and, and score points as a group. Yes, absolutely. And another comment, um, thank you very much. I will try some of them from Jesus, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, there is one question about, again, about pre-primary. Well, not everything in this session is applicable to pre-primary. Yes. Um, in the case of, of Plickers, for example, your students need to be able to read in English. Uh, mm. If they can recognize words, you could ask a question with a picture and see if they can find the correct word mm -hmm. in the list, but it, it would require some, some adaptation. Uh, but a lot of the activities that we've used, like the story cubes, yes. um, the uh, Snapdragon, 
um, and many of the other applications that you've seen can be used in a, in a simpler way. The stories that you use to get kids to describe how things work also don't need to be digital. It can be a story that you tell them and then get them to respond to that. Yes. So there are many different options. And, and for example, Ana Hernandez is saying, I'll try to use the story cubes. It's very adaptable, isn't it, for the whole range from pre-primary up to... It works for absolutely yeah, everyone. Uh, everyone, yeah. everyone. Adults included. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Us. Yeah. <laughs> and Marta Fernandez um, is saying that um, she, she, she says all of my students do, however, when my, when my students are working on a project, she gives them a time limit mm -hmm. and she uses a stopwatch and I myself, um, Marta, have used it in class yeah. to time and put, which, which increases the level of challenge, obviously, and it's a, it's a classroom management um, technique it's another game well. technique. It's another game technique that you can use which, in your classroom. Exactly. Yes, certainly. Um, yeah, very nice. Great, and Isabel, thank you. Interesting ideas. I'm not familiar with them, but hopefully, you will um, explore using some of them soon. Um, let me just. We have a minute or two. Lorena loves Kahoot, but um, the students, the pupils, don't have tablets at school. Yeah. Mm. As I said, if you, if you can use uh, the computer room in the school, then you can use something like this. Yes. If not, you always have the option of your typical uh, scoreboards where you get your students to hold up an, an A or a B depending yeah. on how because they answer. But of course, that requires a bit of, of counting. Uh, the, and the, more, maybe exactly, more exactly. preparation. But that's the advantage of, of flickers, for example, yes. where you do not need to do that, where the technology should do the work for exactly. you. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, and remember, I think the, uh, the message that you're trying to um, put across is it's the techniques, the strategies, rather than the... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The, the when we talk, talk about gamification, you get mostly the idea of how you use techniques and strategies from games. And when you incorporate games in the classroom, we don't often play them as games, but we, we play them as a means to an end. Exactly. To the student, they're games but there are ways of making them, well, of helping them do things in a more entertaining way so that they feel more involved and more attracted to actually doing exactly. it. Exactly. Um, from just very quickly, Flori, thank you, Flori. Um, she what, is asking, um, I didn't understand how Plickers works. I, I mean, there's a lot of ideas, and if you're not it's, familiar it's with it, It's very them, well explained on the website. Yeah, just go just there and... Mm -hmm. it, there's there's a, a short video about it, yes. and there's more information available there. And what she's saying about the photograph, yes. So you take a photograph, don't you, with my yes, with yes, my you need with your mobile. Yeah. I have a number, and I choose the option. It's A, B, C, or D. That's it. And I hold it so that, for example, if I'm holding it like this, the C is here. But if I turned it over, it would be B. And that would be my option, yeah. But yeah. you need to have a picture of all the pupils who I have an individual. I take a picture number. of the whole class that yes. recognizes all the plickers exactly. in the class and sees the correct answers. Exactly. Yes. Great. Okay. Great and um, great webinar. Thank you. Um, so wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Jetro. We hope that you have found these teacher training videos of real use and relevance to your classes. We would like to remind you that you can find many more practical teaching ideas and tips, articles and video clips in Macmillan Advantage. Don't miss this opportunity to continue your professional development. We hope that you have found these teacher training videos of real use and relevance to your classes. We would like to remind you that you can find many more practical teaching ideas and tips, articles and video clips in Macmillan Advantage. Don't miss this opportunity to continue your professional development.